boy. We hadn't done that one in a while, so I was like, how's this end? I don't know. Let's see what happens. I was joking this morning with, with Emily on the way. Well, I said somebody. Mark, Mark Lee told me the other day a funny it, that happened to him. And I, If you see me check this microphone about 15 times, it's because I don't want the same funny happening to me. <laughs> I think he said something about trying to discipline his child after he preached and his microphone was still on. So you got to be careful when you're wired. I'm just, I'm just going to say, okay, but he, he made sure to tell me that and, and anyway. If you have your Bible this morning, Psalm chapter 121 is where we're going to be this morning. And, and I say that like no, nothing silly has ever happened to me. The first time I preached in Indiana, and I'll tell this and we'll, we'll get back on track, the pulpit was a see-through clear glass pulpit. And one of the guys had told me, just make sure you fly a zip before you get up there because I've been up there and it's happened to me before. So I like this one that I could hide behind a little bit just in case. But if you have your Bible, Psalm 121. So in the book of Psalms, there are 15 chapters. And we're in the middle of it and what we're going to look at this morning. They're labeled a song of ascent. Psalms would have been sung when the Israelites went up to Jerusalem for the annual feasts that they had year in and year out. So... Ascend literally go up, right? So most of them had to go up to go to Jerusalem or, or go to Jerusalem as it was the big place to go, right? It's like going to St. Louis for us sometimes or Chicago or whatever. It was a big place. So they would do this year in and year out. And okay, it wasn't probably a short journey in the car. You didn't just get in the car and ride on up there, right? Just a couple hours. No, it was sometimes days and they would walk to Jerusalem, right? So... This one specifically speaks into the protection that God has to offer us, and the author is, is not known of this exact chapter. Um, some of these are, of course, of David, and, and this one is, is just one we don't know. But in, in the valleys that we have experienced now or in the past or that we're going to experience at some point, it's easy to get caught up in those valleys. We can look around in our church and say that our church is in a valley because there's only a few of us in the building, Right? And we can look at that and we can focus on the problem instead of the solution. So this morning, again, if you would stand in honor of reading God's word, we're going to read Psalms 121. We're going to, we're going to look at all eight verses. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence, my, whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He keeps you he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even further more. Let's pray this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you thankful for this opportunity to be in your house, God. Thankful for your word and the promises that are in your word, God. And even in the difficult times that we can, we can see your promises, God, and we can still know that you're a good God. We just thank you for that. God, in this time that we, we get together, I just ask that, that our hearts and our minds would be clear of the things that are going on in the world around us, God. And just allow us to focus on you for this time today, God. Allow, allow us to, to take heart to what you're telling us today, God, and allow us to to take it and use it, God, in our daily lives. Not just to leave it in this building, God, but to take it with us and, and know that you're still good, God, that you still are protecting us day in and day out. God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for those that are here this morning, God. Again, I just ask that you allow us to, to leave here as a better witness for you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and amen. I feel like I'm reading Old King James. I'm not quite that far yet, but I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting closer every week, so... But it, it's, like I said, it's easy for us to get caught up in the valleys of life. It's easy for us to get discouraged because we're looking in the wrong position for encouragement. We, we want to be encouraged by those around us, and, and, and we need that, right? We have a desire to be encouraged by people around us, and, and again, we, we, we need that sometimes. We need to be lifted up in our own lives. And again, we should, be, we should desire to be encouraged by those around us and have, to have them say just what we want when we want it. However, the encouragement from the world does not last long. The encouragement from the world is, is short term. And we don't like that, right? We, we want to feel encouraged and we want it to last a long time. But when we go through difficult times, 
it doesn't take long to focus back on those difficult times, right? To see the valley and say, well, I'm never going to get out of this valley because whatever the problem is, right? But the, the, the journey for the Israelites was not an easy trip, like driving to, to town for us, okay? Their journey had issues. They would encounter all kinds of problems along the way, okay? And I'm not talking like a flat tire. They expected to have issues on the way to Jerusalem. Why? Because they were going to serve their God. We as Christians, when we come to church, we should expect things to happen, not always in a positive way. Why? Because Satan doesn't want you to make it to the door some mornings. Satan doesn't want us to get out of bed some mornings. He wants us to feel discouraged and to stay in discouragement and not to rise out of that. How often do we fall into that? It's, it's easy. But I read this week in, in my study that this psalm seems to be intended to instill confidence in those making the pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship. And they said this, while the journey was difficult, when successfully completed, it can be dis- used to describe our lives in which the faithful can be confident in the tireless care that God provides. That we can be confident in the tireless care that God provides. It doesn't mean that it's going to always seem like it's a positive thing when God's caring for us, right? The Bible says that God disciplines those whom he loves, right? Just think of your parents. If you were never disciplined as, your, as a child, there might have been an issue there, okay? Um, I got in trouble this week because Annabelle got a smack on the hand the other day, okay? We're in the recliner, and she's reaching for the curtain, and I told her no like three times, and okay, there's, there's a line you've got to be drawn at some point even for a 10-month-old. So she reached across, and whack goes the hand on the hand, and she starts crying. She didn't mess with the curtain anymore, though, so I guess I won that round for a minute at least. But my, my point is the same. Things are going to happen sometimes, right? Sometimes we're going to keep reaching for the same thing, and God's going to smack our hand eventually and go, hey, you're looking in the wrong place. Sometimes, I, I, when I first started ministry, I, I can remember feeling God just smack me upside the back and head. hey, stupid, I'm trying to tell you something, okay? That's, that's my relationship with God sometimes. Hey, I don't really think he calls me that, but that's what I need sometimes, okay? I need a kick in the pants. But we, we can be confident that God still cares for us, even in the bad times. He puts people in our place that, that are there for us, even if it's just for a short while, to get us through that, right? We've all been through difficult times. Just as the words, though, of, of Highlands by, by Hillsong says, I will praise you on the mountains, and I will praise you in the mountains in my way. That's, that's deep right there. If, if we're in the valley, the mountain's what we're looking at, and it's not in the positive light, right? We're looking from the bottom looking up. We went to Pikes Peak several years ago. Pikes Peak is way up there, okay? Just, like, to get up there, you've got to, like, do this up the mountain, okay? But when you're at the bottom, it doesn't look that big. It's a, it's a hill at the bottom, okay? Let's just be honest. But you get to the top, and you can see almost all the way to the interstate, okay? You're a long way up there at that point. That, that's really, in a nutshell, what our faith should look like, though. When we're at the bottom, sometimes that doesn't just look like a hill, though, does it? It looks like the biggest mountain that we're ever going to have to try to reach the top of. But when we get to the top, that's when we really see God's glory revealed to us. How often, though, do we get to the top and we say, well, I'm good, I'm done, I made it. That, that's, the, that's the pitfall we've got we've to stay out of. But this morning, I, I feel that we are in a desperate need to break free of the grasp that is holding us back right now. I, I've said it several times, and, and we've been going through a big valley the last few months. And I've said it several times on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, and it, it, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through it. But it's not just going to be, well, it's over now, we're done with it. <laughs> you can't just say, well, I'm at the bottom of the mountain, and all of a sudden, I'm good, I'm at the top. No, it doesn't work that way. We all can realize that in our lives. We have to put some work into it, right? But a fire needs to start in each and every one of us. It can't start with just a few of us. It can't start in just one of us and expect the rest of everybody to just figure it out and the church to grow, okay? It's got to start somewhere, right? But a fire has to start in each and every one of us. It needs to begin now and not be put out easily. How often do we get fired up to serve God? I can, I can attest that when you go to, and Mike can probably say this too, when you go to a conference, you get all fired up. What do you want to do when you get back to church? You want to do all these things. What happens the first second you walk into church? Somebody complains about something, or it's a downhill from this to when you get there, right? 
I, I can uh, remember going to Johnny Hunt the last few years, and you get there, and you, you get all this encouragement, all this information, all this stuff, and you come back like, oh, I'm going to apply all that. And then you forget half of it on the way home, and you miss the rest of it because you're focusing on something else at that point. It's easy for us to get caught up. The valley will end, but it doesn't mean that the mountaintop is next. Okay, sometimes we've got to get to the level playing field first. So the, uh, the verses this morning, I got my three points like normal. It may take me an hour. We'll see. I doubt it. If I ever preach for an hour, something's wrong. Okay, I'm just I'm throwing it out there. But the first thing I want us to see, God will always be our help, verses 1 and 2. The psalmist says, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence or where comes my help. And then he responds to his own question, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Where does our help come from? Who, who can help me? Notice he, he looked at the hill. And when I think of looking at the hill, I see it's coming, okay? You, you don't just all of a sudden you're on the hill, okay? You, you feel it coming. I can remember we used to ride bikes from our house up on the hill on 15 to Wayne City, okay? And I'm not, it's, it's, everybody knows what I'm talking about if they've been past our house. The hill is right there. But I can remember riding, riding to Wayne City and the, the way to town was nice. It was easy. You got that hill to start. You were on the way, right? However, on the way back, once you passed Keynes, all you saw was that hill. Oh, no, here it comes. I've got this hill we've got to go up. And all you would focus on on how hard are you going to have to pedal, how hard is it going to be to get to the top of that hill. And, and looking back, it was just us being kids, right? But in reality, this is life, right? We, we, it may start off nice, down that hill and on you go, right? But then you look back and you go, oh my gosh, <laughs> that hill is a lot bigger on the way back up. I don't know that I'll ever make it back up that hill. The ascent that we need to make out of this valley will not be easy. It's not just going to happen overnight, okay? Just because we, we want to get out of it doesn't mean that it just happens. It will be hard for us as a church to grow the way we desire unless we get out of it. Amen? There, there's work to be done, okay? And, and this isn't, a, I don't want to discourage anybody, but this is how it is. But the focus cannot be on the hill. It can't be on how big the mountain is that we need to overcome. If we focus on the mountain, we'll never, we'll never reach the top. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist answers his own question, though, but, but listen to the words. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Tony Evans put it this way, the greatest protection doesn't come from the mountain, but from the one who created the mountains. We will not, will not be safe by simply focusing on the top of the mountain but by faith in the one who made the height of that mountain. God knows every mountain that we're going to come up to. He knows every valley that we're going to go down to. He knows the depth of those things and the height of those things because guess what? He's created them all. He knew and he knows the pain, the suffering, the things that we go through. But, but I love the way Tony Evans said that the greatest protection doesn't come from the mountain. It comes from the one who made it. Because I'm going to tell you now, when you get to the mountain, my gosh, like earthquake down here. When you get to the mountain, if you quit there, you're going to be right back in the valley. If we as a church, we get to a point where we're growing and things are happening the way we want and we quit doing what God has told us to do, it's not going to be long. We're going to dwindle away. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We get away from the word, we're going to be in trouble. We think we're in trouble now some days, right? But we get away from the word, we're in the biggest trouble we can ever imagine. Churches all across America are getting away from the word. Me, me and Mark Lee had a conversation about that the other day, okay? And, and it's, it's not just me thinking it, it's not just other pastors thinking it, it's everybody sees that churches are getting away from the word. Why? We want to feel good when we go to church. You'll never be another, a better Christian if you just go to church to feel good, okay? Sometimes the best... Best moments in your Christian life are when you go home feeling bad. Why? Because you're going to change something. You're going to do something about it. If you get told you're not doing your job right, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to get bowled up and mad or you're going to change your ways, right? 
Sometimes bull up a mat is where we want to be, though. But in our Christian faith, if we're not willing to, to seek God who, who made the heavens and the earth to protect us, to help us, to do these things with us, things aren't going to happen. Things aren't going to change. I, I think of, when I think of our help, I think, I think of Jonah, okay? Jonah ran the opposite direction of, of God, right? He wanted to go to, away from Nineveh. I don't want to go to that place. God should just forget that place and move on with his day, right? But God gets his attention, right? He gets him back on track. And then what's he doing in the last chapter of the book? He's sitting complaining again. God, they're not getting it. They're not paying attention. They're not, they're not understanding. And I think that God made that plant grow. Shade him, right? Now, the rest of the story I'm going to skip for a minute. Okay, I'll get back to the rest of that story. Because this plant doesn't last forever. <laughs> But my point is this, God will help us, but we've got to seek him. We've got to look to God and say, God, God, how can I get out of this? What, what do I need to do for you to help me that much more? The second thing, and this is, this is one of the most difficult ones for us to understand in bad t- situations. God is our protector, okay? That's not meaning God's going to protect you from this earth and the bad things that are going to happen. But, but listen, listen to the words. The Lord is your keeper. The, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. Right? It says the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It makes us feel really good, right? If we take that one verse and say God will protect us from all the evil things that can happen. And we take that out of context and we say, okay, that's all God meant. He's just going to protect us in everything. One of the, the verses that have been taken out of context the most is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, right? We can take that and say, well, I can do anything I want. I can fly if I want to. Okay, no, you can't. God didn't make you a bird. Okay, if he wanted you to fly, he gave you wings and, and made you a bird. But, but this shall preserve you from all the evil things that hell has to offer. He's not going to protect you from the bad things that are going to happen on this earth. He'll be with you, okay? It says that the first part, he's our help. He's going to stand beside us, right? But bad things are still going to happen to good people. As long as there's sin in the world, so until Jesus comes back, bad things are going to happen to good people. The same God who comes to help us, though, will, will not allow us to slip. The big part, though, in, in verses 3 and 4, really where we're going to focus, I kind of skipped ahead. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who holds us will not sleep. And, and, and think of that promise, though. The middle of the night when you can't sleep because you're struggling with something, guess what? God's awake with you if you just seek him. And, and I saw this week, and, and Sheila will like this, Bishop William Alfred um, Quay, I think, Quail, I'm not sure, was a leader of the Methodist Church, okay, so Sheila's going to like this, let's start with the Methodist Church here, okay, this is a quote, but it said years ago, he was the leader in the church, who shared about the night he worked into the early morning hours trying to finish a project. At a moment of intense pressure when he felt so tired and overwhelmed, his eyes fell on Psalms 121, and the promise of the Lord's 24-hour Virgil over him. This reminded him, and catch this, of how defeating and exhausting were his efforts to work for God rather than allowing God to work through him. In his spirit, he heard the Lord say to him, there's no need for both of us to stay up all night. I'm going to stay up anyway so you can go to bed and get some night's sleep. That's, that's the God that we serve right there. Okay? That he is always watching over us. Whether we like it or not. They, they say the things that happen at, at night will be exposed in the day, right? God sees everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think. And that should scare us a little bit, first of all, okay? Because some of us think bad things or we don't like some things that are going on, right? But again, I want us to remind ourselves this doesn't mean bad things won't happen, Okay? <laughs> I'm sure that this guy didn't have a perfect life, the guy I just quoted. I'm sure things happened to him that he didn't like. This microphone's about to be nuts. I'm loose up there, moving too much. It it doesn't mean we'll be without harm, 
but rather that our Creator will walk with us and He will stay with us day and night. Think of the things that even in the valleys that you can realize that God was with you. I I can remember before my, my grandfather physically left this earth and breathed his last breath, we had a prayer one of mom's friends came over. She'd hit a deer on the way to our house. Okay, I, I don't know about Satan trying to do things, but literally she hit a deer on the way to the house to have prayer with our family. And I've told this story a hundred times. I still don't know what's happened. Okay, it's been nine years ago. And we, we got to praying and, and my mom started getting loud in our prayer service, in our prayer time. And you feel this weight, like you felt like weightless for a minute. And everybody who was in the room, if you asked us, could tell you this story. And we can't explain it, but it was as if God was in the room taking Grandpa away, taking his spirit away with him. But it wasn't like a scary thing. It wasn't an upsetting thing. It was like a peaceful thing. That, that's the God that we serve, that even in the valley, peace can be shown in our lives. He who keeps you will not slumber. He's not going to go to sleep on you just because, okay? Okay. How many times have you fallen asleep in prayer at night? Okay, I've done it a lot. Okay? Sometimes I wake up and I still feel like I just never quit praying all night. I, I don't care if you fall asleep every, every day and tonight come back. We're going we're to talk about the disciples falling asleep in the garden with Jesus. But I, I don't care if you fall asleep mid-prayer, mid mid-Bible reading every night. God's going to finish that for you. You're going to wake up in the morning and you might feel a little different than when you went to sleep. Why? Because God was with you in your prayer all night. I have no doubts that God is not going anywhere. There's absolutely no safer place in the world than where God wants you to be. That was a quote I read this week as well. No safer place in the world than where God wants you to be. Not not where you are, okay, where God wants you to be. If we're doing God's will, then we're where God wants us to be. He's going to protect us, okay? Again, bad things are still going to happen sometimes. When we allow the will of God to be the only thing we search for, nothing can defeat us. And as a church, I really think we need to realize that. If we're doing what God wants us as a collective group to do, things are going to happen in a positive way for the kingdom of God. The third point, and I'm going to wrap it up. God is our keeper. So traveling across the desert towards Jerusalem, these, these pilgrims would have faced dangers including the elements. Okay, They didn't have sunscreen either probably to... You know, put that SPF 50 on. Okay, that's the only thing that works in my house, at least. SPF 50, you got to have it. But they would face the elements, especially the heat, the wind, different things like that. And there would likely have not been shade in many spots either. But the psalmist still found a way to praise God in verses 5 through 8. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. You know, it's, it's easy for us to get caught up in the things that are going on around us, right? It, it's easy for us to say, well, God wasn't with me in that moment. God must not be a loving God like he says he is. God, God must just not care about me. When we submit to God, though, when we submit ourselves to God's kingdom, then and only then will we receive the blessings of his covering. So there's something that we as a church need to realize today is that we all need to be reading this every day. We need to be in the word every single day. I know, life gets busy. Austin reminded me earlier that the next month or two is going to be real nice for me because it's new house, new job, new this, new that, and all this stuff that comes with it, right? But we still have to make time in the busyness of life to be in God's word. To show God that he is worth more than just our Sunday mornings. That he's worth more than just our Sunday nights, our Wednesday nights, and then when the doors are open, he's worth everything that we have to offer. God has told us he will never leave us nor forsake us. That is why we should be pleading with others to come to Christ, though. The world needs to know that there's somebody that cares about him more than the person that's abusing them, the person that's mistreating them, or different things like that. I believe with my whole heart, and everybody in this room will, will attest to this, the Bible tells us that once you come to God, He will keep you. There, there are churches across the world today, well, two different things, and I'm going to rag on people for a minute. 
They believe that the baptism of waters can save a person. Okay? It's water. I'm just going to be real honest. It's just water. It may be warm water, okay, but it's still just water. There's nothing powerful about going in baptistry other than submitting yourself to God and showing the world that I love God and I've submitted myself to him. And there are other churches that believe today that you can run away from God and he will leave you and forsake you. That you can lose your salvation. And I've said this before in other churches. If I can lose my salvation, that cross would not be empty today. Jesus would have had to go to it time and time and time again if I can lose my salvation. The power of the cross was once and done, people. There, there's no way we have to go back. The world needs to know that the cross was once and done. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, it was the end. Okay, It was the beginning of our opportunity for salvation. Opportunity, though. There's, there's the world that believes that if you're good enough, you can get there. I've gone witnessing before. and Well, I'm a good person. Well, that's great, but you're still a sinner going to hell. I don't care if you're the best person in the world. I don't don't care if you've never done anything wrong by the world's standards. You're still a sinner in need of God's grace, of God's mercy. He will not take away our salvation. And Southern Baptist churches are well known for that fact. Once saved, always saved. Okay? But I want everybody in this room to realize that the Southern Baptist Convention is not 100% on that anymore. They've allowed something called Calvinism to come into the churches around the world, and guess what they believe? That your salvation can be lost. We as a church need to realize that we need to be careful because the Bible says that once you're saved, you're saved. Once you come to God, you're, you're God's. Can we drift from God? Can we, can we move away in the opposite direction from God? Yeah, but who moved? You were God. We did, Right? In our daily lives, when we go through the bad things, we move away from God sometimes, right? And it's okay. It's okay. But it's when we completely turn from God and say, God, I want nothing to do with you. I know when when we get to heaven, God's going to say one of two things to us. (laughs) Well done, my good and faithful servant, or be gone, for I never knew you. I don't think anybody in this room wants to hear number two. I I don't want to just get there and say, well, you did okay. Okay. Hey, I want to hear well done. Why? Because I want to serve my God to the best of my abilities. We as a church have to serve God the best of our abilities. God, our keeper, will not let us go as a child who picks up one rock to pick up one that's cooler, okay? God's not like a three-year-old that, oh, there's a rock. I've got to pick that rock up, okay? Oh, there's another rock. I can't have both, though. I've got to drop one, okay? I'm sure Archer never does that, right? Yeah, all the time, okay? <laughs> Annabelle sees one toy at 10 months old. She's like, ooh, that, that, but I want that one too, okay? But she doesn't want to let go of this one. God does not let us go. And if it was not true, Jesus would have either never came to die for us or would he have to die for us more often than it had already said. If we could lose our salvation, Jesus would have never came. Why? Because we were already losing our salvation every year, right? And we sacrificed animals in the Old Testament. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to close. I'm going to ask Carrie and Sheila to come, and, and I'm going to wrap this up somehow or another. I don't know yet. But we have to realize that, that bad things are going to happen, first of all. Okay, I can't, I can't stress that enough. I, and I know if you look back in the church history not too many years ago, we built this new sanctuary, and things were going good, Right? And it wasn't long and things weren't going so good. Right? And we can focus on that and say, well, we were once a big church. We were once a thriving church. We're still thriving today. I don't know if you realize this, okay? We don't have to have a lot of people in the sanctuary to be a thriving church. Too many, too many churches around the world worry about how many people are in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. So what do they do? They bring new things. Okay, there's a church in Evansville, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Their first song of worship every, every week is not a Christian song. It is a contemporary rock song, a country song, nothing that points to Jesus. Why? Well, we want people to feel welcome. You shouldn't have to do a rock song to make people feel welcome in your church. So my question is this. 
And and I'm going to ask that you stand. And this is a question I think we all are going to say yes to, but we really need to think about our answer before we say it. Do we want to get where God has designed for us to be? If your answer is yes, what are you doing to get there? If your answer is, well, I think so, you need to be in prayer about what God's designed for you to be. And it will not be as simple as just being in church week in and week out. We want you to be here, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to dis- diminish, that, diminish that at all. But you're not going to get closer to God just by showing up once a week, just by being in the Word once a week. And, and those who are in this room that have gone through the valleys know that if you're closer to God, the valleys don't feel as bad. They're still going to hurt. Things are still going to not feel great, okay? But the closer we can be to God, the easier things will be. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this day, God. And I thank you that you love us, God, even when we don't love you sometimes, God. We, we're, we're angry with you, God, whatever the situation. God, I, I just thank you that you still love us through that, God. That you're willing to, to love on us, God. That, God, even in our anger towards you, that you still seek for us, God. You still search for us. You still love and long for us, God. God, as, as a church, I, I pray, God, that, that a fire would be set in our hearts, God. That we would serve you more diligently every day, God. God, you're so worthy of everything that we have to offer, every breath that we have on this earth. And God, I just ask that every breath that we breathe, God, would be honoring to you, God. That the world would know that we are a follower of you without us speaking a word to them, God. God, allow our our attitude to reflect our relationship with you, God. We we love you, God, but we, we want your help in our lives, God, to be a better witness, God, to be a light in this dark and dying world for you, God. God, we plead with you to be with us, to walk with us, to to hold our hand through the situations we go through, God, and to lead us out of the valley into the glorious place you have designed for us, God. God, in this time of invitation, I just ask that your will be done in our hearts, God, this morning. Whatever the needs are this morning, God, that we would be willing to lay them on your altar, God, to give them to you, God, and say, God, I can't hold this on my home. God, whatever the need is this morning, I just ask that you would be moving in this service. We ask this in Jesus' name, and amen.